What's going on YouTube? Vapor Function LA here. Today we're going to be taking a look at and talking a little bit about the Moonshot RDTA by Sigeli. This is actually a pretty cool RDTA. It's got a pretty small tank, but it's pretty awesome. Supremo and Sigeli actually teamed up and made this RDTA. I mean, it has its ups and downs, but we're going to actually go down and take a look at it and do a little build for you guys and come up and talk about it. Here we go. All right, and we are up close with the Moonshot RDTA. This is the box that it comes in. It is made by Sigeli, and it's also designed by Supremo. As you can see on the bottom, Supremo in San Jose, California. It is actually kind of like a collab with Sigeli and Supremo. They made a tank together, and it's actually really, really nice. On the side, it says Vape It, Love It. And on the very bottom, it says Nano, and it's 22 millimeter. This is actually a pretty cool tin that it comes in. Kind of reminds me of those lunchbox tins that you used to take to school back in the day. This is the inside of the tin. On the back side of the lid, it says flavor chase or cloud chase without dripping. Enjoy the moonshot. And it's active cooling, flow precision, cotton control spin deck, and small chambered RDA deck. It's a true RDTA as they claim RDA with a tank and it can be used through 30 watt to 200 watts. If you guys care about the little extra stuff that it says, there you go. Alright, so take this out and show you guys the goodies that's inside. You actually have your RDTA right here. You have an extra glass and O-rings. This is Pyrex glass. It's pretty thick. You'll see that when I rebuild. It comes with some silicone rings for the tank and a O-ring for the bottom. All right, and you have some Allen keys with some grub screws or grub nuts or Allen screws, whatever you want to call them. It comes extra in here. So it gives you a bunch of stuff just in case you lose stuff or your O-rings rip. And you have your RDTA right here. On the middle, on the chimney section, you have the Supremo logo. Mine actually says sample on the top. This is actually a sample and it was sent to me by Elevapor, so it says sample. And this is only for review, so if you buy one, it's not going to say that. It says Moonshot on the bottom, and on the back side, it says Supremo. You have Cyclops airflow channels, and they actually close fully off when you turn to the right. There you go, it's the same thing on the back side. There you go, wide open, and it has four juice flow options. Well, it's not really an option, but juice flow channels where your wick can just sit there and it could be fully juiced. I actually never had a dry hit with this, so it juices very, very well. Just depending on how you wick it up. So this is the top part where you fill it. It's fairly easy to unscrew. It doesn't really take that much effort. My fingers are kind of slippery, so it's kind of hard, but it's very easy. This thing is actually compatible with any 510 drip tip, so if you don't like this very small, slim drip tip kind of thing on there, you can put a drip tip on top. Just depends. I have a couple drip tips. Just showing you. Some of them are kind of dirty, but that's just how it looks. Alright, so when you take this off, this is how you fill it. It has two giant holes on here. One for the juice and the other for the airflow to escape. When you put the juice in, it's very easy, and I never, ever had a, any time where I overflowed it. And you have an O-ring on the top to make sure you have no leaky juice. So let's put that back on. And we're going to unscrew the chimney section. So you take the glass, you just give it a little tug, and you unscrew it. There you go. This thing, for some reason, keeps getting stuck for me. And it keeps unscrewing off the RDA. Well, the RDA base that's right here. Uh, let me take this off too so I can get everything out of the way. And on the bottom, like I said, you have your RDA deck. It's a pretty good RDA deck. It has very good airflow. But the thing is, this thing spins unless it's locked down. O-ring's coming up. Don't mind that. But like I said, it spins, so it's kind of hard to build on it. You can't really do anything. I've seen some people actually put an Allen key in here. Supposedly the one that's provided is supposed to fit, but maybe because I have a sample, when you put it through here, 
and suppose we are supposed to stick it to this part on the bottom while you're building it it kind of holds it upwards and it's easier to build on but for me it doesn't work that way but actually the idea of doing that with building this thing is actually pretty much easier to use but I'll show you in a minute how to do it actually with the allen key as well so on here you actually have kind of like a hybrid connection it's not adjustable there you go it's I believe it's gold plated brass not really sure how the cooling technology works maybe it's because the actual thing is very thin and it's not threaded onto anything so it kind of heat sinks I guess so one way to build we can throw a build on here my option to do this is I put it on an allen screw or an allen key and I kind of hold it with my finger against there and it won't spin it actually kind of wiggles but that's it so let's throw a build on here and we will vape on this alright so I got some coils made so let's talk about building this so I have my own little allen key Kind of like a tech tech key that I would use. Uh, thank you to uh, RDA that I have. That actually, well, well, Tofo. It says right there that they supplied this with one of the RDAs, and this thing has been my all time RDA key. Anyways, so we're going to build on this. So holding it kind of is out of the question. It's kind of hard. So we're going to do it the other way, how I kind of told you guys about earlier. Alright, so I'm going to unscrew these screws real quick. There you go. Alright, so let's try this new way. I found it to be a lot easier. Show you guys how to build on this thing. Alright, so I have a 3mm coil. I'm using 22 gauge nichrome 80 flat wire. Did I get to focus? Anyways, it's flat wire, so... I'm gonna build with it. So what you're gonna do, the tricky part about this is that it kinda requires you to have three hands. I'm gonna put this in like this. Kinda difficult to do on camera. And you put it to about right there. Kinda straighten it out a little bit. It is what it is. Alright. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do a pre-cut. So, get my trusty coil master kit. And cut off these. Make sure it's tight. I love this tank. But it is a bitch to work on, so I'll show you guys how hard it is. But you can actually do it fairly quick. Let's take that out, then put the other one on the other side. Measure it out, cut it. Put it right there just evenly. Let's hold it tight. There we go. And we have two pre-cut coils. Alright, so the tricky part about this is that you do have to bend your coils up. So what I do is I make it right here. And I can probably put in both coils. Tighten it down. And then start with the bending process. I'm going to get both coils in at once. There we go. Let me take this off, actually. And this is where that 
Allen key is going to come in handy. This is very tricky. So I'm going to start it off with tightening down one side. As you can tell, kind of pain. But once you get it down, it gets a lot easier towards the end. So let's make sure that's lined up. Push through, hold it tight. Kind of going off camera a little bit, I apologize. This is kind of difficult to build on, so try to get as much in camera as I can for you guys. You basically get the picture, I'm tightening it down. Alright, so we have this kind of tightened down. It's kind of crazy looking. But I'm going to straighten out the coils right now. Since it's all tight, set and done. This one I think needs to go in more. So I didn't make a little fine adjustment because it makes it a lot easier. Loosen this up, push this over a little bit. There you go, hold it really tight. There you go. Now, now is the fun part. So, after you have your coils installed, and it looks like this. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to bend them up to right here. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to pull it up just like that. And there's one. I don't have it up all the way, but I have to fix it in just a minute. Let me pull this one up. Well, I need to tighten this one down a little bit more. Pull it tight, and then now it's a huge gap. So make sure you pull your coils too. The other side kind of popping out, so I gotta fix that. I really like this Allen key, but I have big hands. But it works really well, so I drop it a lot while I'm working on RDA, but it's a win-win. Alright, so we're popping out again. Let me get that sucker in there all the way. Get that bad boy nice and tight. A little difficult using flat wire, regular Kenthal or Nichrome or nickel or whatever will work very well. Just round wire works a lot better. But I'm doing it a little bit harder on myself, so I'm using this flat wire. So there you go. Just got to straighten it out a little bit. Um, one thing I do 
is I'm going to push down on the wire itself with the flathead. Since this is flat wire, I gotta be really careful with it. Go. Push this down a little bit on this side. Should be good. So far, it's looking very good. I have a little extra I have to cut off because it's just going to be in the way and it's access wire that we pulled through earlier. So I'm going to have to cut this off. So I'm going to have to get in here very carefully. Give that a snip. Let me push this down. There we go. There we go. And this side has a little extra slack too. There you go. All right. So we have this thing built. I gotta even out the coils a little bit, straighten them out. Then we're gonna insert it on. But the thing is, I can't just go and put this on the RDA. I have to kind of assemble this thing. Kind of cut myself a little bit, so don't mind that. Got this wire flying. And we're almost good to go with this thing. Almost ready to wake. Straighten out these coils. There we go. You can focus on it. Anyways. Doesn't want to focus up close. I need a new camera. Alright, so we are ready to wick it, I guess, after we dry fire it. So what we're going to do with firing it is we're going to have to insert this sleeve on top. Make sure that it does not touch with mine. It actually does touch the sidewalls. So what I'm going to have to do is push these coils a little bit more inwards. There we go. Feed this one a little bit more inwards. Look about even. Yeah, so let's test this piece. And it's looking pretty good. All right, so with this, what you're gonna have to do is you have to align your little notch right there so you put this together like this and you make sure it doesn't fall through and you screw it onto the base there you go now we're gonna dry fire it 
So we're going to use the 521 tab on here. Check our resistance first to make sure it's not shorting out. And we're going to dry fire this thing. So definitely we need to squeeze. Now it actually warms up correctly from the center out. So we are ready to wick it. Alright, so we are all coiled up and ready to be wicked. So this is the trick how you wick this thing. Well actually by trick. Alright, so what I do is basically I twist the cotton really tight just so I can slide it in. I'll do it on one side for example. Hold this deck, my hand, make sure it's really tight, slide it through the coil. Strain it out just a little bit, then I'm going to pull it on through. Right, so it's in there nice and snug, not too tight, not too loose. Alright, and I'm going to give it some slack so I can pull it down like this. Just on the bottom. Now I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to do the same exact thing. There we go. And what I do usually is I take this part right here. This is the trick. And I'm going to slide this over the top. So I'm going to have to basically squeeze it down. Squeeze this down. So we get the wick on the sides and it's just squeezed in there. There we go. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to shave off the wick. And this is the most easiest way to lick this thing and most well basically the best way performance reasons this does work very very well you just keep trimming it keep trimming it as close as possible there you go and what you're going to have to do is you tuck it in as much as you can so you don't see the wick anymore. There you go, got that side done. Now you got this side. And one more. And you're basically set. You're completely wicked. 
and you know that it's going to be perfect for wicking that's the easiest way how to wick this thing so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around I'm going to make sure that my air channel is free and I don't have any slack of wick or cotton on the sides a little bit so I have my airflow and my cotton doesn't block it at all there you go so basically that's a premium setup for that then all we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up in the bottom part of the RTA RDTA actually put it in and we are going to juice this thing up so I'm gonna put some juice on it let me get a little stand so I can set it on and the juice that we're going to be using today is Swaggerlific by the Visid Collection from Ross the Vapors. And we're going to be wicking this up, just saturating the coil just a little bit. Make sure that up top that is perfect. a little bit down the sides you don't want to put it down in your chimney spot or your airflow channel so make sure no juice goes down there make sure it's completely wicked pretty good and we are basically ready to vape on it so let's do a little test fire. I like to test fire it a little bit just to get that juice wicking in there. So once it starts heating up, the juice thins out and your coils become dry just about instantly in the beginning. So this is a really proper way to wicking and juicing any coil. So it should be ready now. There you go, vapor. Let's put this thing back together and fill it up. Okay, so we got the tank assembled and we're going to get ready to juice this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take your RDTA and I'm going to take the juice and I'm going to put it in on one side there you go squeeze it this is a 2 mil capacity so it should be very very easy to fill and it shouldn't take up too much juice there you go basically filled to the brim can't see it on the side and all we gotta do is put the top cap on and we are ready to vape on it All right, you guys, and we are back. So we took a look at this thing. This thing has a pretty nice build. It's pretty excellent quality, but there is some cons in this thing. Honestly, I mean, the box that comes in is amazing. I'm actually gonna use this box to put drip tips and stuff in. It's a really cool looking box. It's really detailed. Once you take the foam out, it's actually pretty big. So I'm gonna use that. That's a big plus. I'm really into collector's tins, especially for vape stuff. It's actually a pretty cool tin to have. Uh, just to put some stuff in, but into the tank. For the cons of this tank, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get into it first. The cons, I mean, the build deck. I can't stress that any more than I actually can. The build deck. I don't know what Segeli is thinking or what Supremo is thinking when they combined and they wanted to make a RDTA and make a absolutely great RDTA. Maybe it's because they wanted to have something that 
that transfers the heat or has active cooling technology. That's what they state that this RDTA has. I actually think that the deck that this has, the building deck, it's absolutely a pain in the ass to build on. I mean, it is a pain in the ass to build on. But in other words, it is actually night and day when it comes to building on here. When you build on this thing, it's very, very hard. It honestly makes you want to have more than two arms. I mean, they want you to have like four arms on your body so you can hold the RDTA, the deck, in your hand, and then you can unscrew the screws with your other hand, insert the coils in, then you got to somehow use another arm to align the coils and tighten down the screws. I mean, it's really, really difficult. But once you get it right, the build on this thing and the flavor, the vapor, and the whole outcome is just amazing. It's a very good RDTA. I highly would recommend this, but I highly recommend this to more of an advanced user because this thing is just very difficult to use, well, to actually build on. I mean, there could be a lot of faulty incidents with somebody shorting out their coil, blowing up their mod. They're not using a regulated device. This thing right here, I am using my own box mod. This is not regulated, but if you use something where you can short out your RDTA or short out your coil somehow and blow yourself up, I mean, it's not the greatest thing because building this thing, it takes really advanced like coil building just to make this thing work because it's so difficult and you have to have it just right. But the outcome on this thing is very good. Would I recommend this to anybody? Yes, I would. If you know how to build coils, absolutely buy this thing because the flavor on this thing, the vapor production on this thing is just way outstanding. Another con on this is that it's got a two millimeter, well, two mil, actually, I don't know why I said millimeter, has a two mil juice tank. It doesn't hold a lot of juice. It actually, it guzzles up so much juice, it, it's ridiculous. You need to carry a bottle on you to refill it all the time. But I mean, if you're just chilling, you don't feel like dripping, this is absolutely a good tank for you to use. I mean, if you're going to travel short distances or somewhat just to keep you from not dripping and driving, this is an excellent thing to have because it has the same RD experience and it also has a, a tank basically built onto the RDA. I think that's that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a, a con. Well, that's not really a con. It's a pro. Just the short tank, and it just has a two mil capacity, and you basically only have this much in here to, like, put your juice in, and that's all you have. Just two mils. I mean, it goes really quickly, but then again, it's a stubby RDA, and you're very close to the coil, very close to the chamber. Uh, excuse me. You're very close to the coil, and the chamber is just very low, and that's what brings out the flavor so much. Anyway, so let's take another vape on this, and we'll get this thing rolling out. All right, so price point on this thing. Price point, this is actually an RDTA that's fairly priced for what it is and what it's worth. This thing is going between $40 and $50. So, I think it's well worth it because it's not a $100 tank. It's not a $80 tank. It's actually between $40 and $50. Just somewhere between. I've seen different sites. We can get it from Element Vape, a whole bunch of different sites, where it's between $40 and $50. But, I'm going to guide you guys down to LA Vapor because they're the ones that sent this out to me for review. And I'm going to give you guys their brand new website. They just launched their new website. It's la-vapor.com. I'm going to leave it on the links down below so you guys can check this out. I'm pretty sure they have this listed on the website already. Until then, I highly recommend you guys checking out their website. They've got a whole bunch of cool stuff for pretty decent prices. It's pretty cheap. They're beating a lot of the market out there. So go ahead and check them out. And uh, that's basically it. All right, you guys. So like I always say, stay strong, vape on, Peace out, you guys. Till next time.